Hello and welcome to my new SDXL creative testing video. Narrated again by my favourite AI voice, Charlotte. This time with an experimental workflow where I knotted the SDXL models together with the IP adapters and the stable video diffusion model. I know I'm a little late on the IP adapters. I'm sure it's because I didn't want to give up trying to get the SDXL control net working to put my ideas into practice. But better late than never. In any case, I'm more than impressed by the possibilities that the adapters open up. See for yourself. Part 1. Creating Embeds the advantage of using embeds is not only that once we have created them, we can use them again and again, but also that they save precious VRAM for later use. And this means we can keep the annoying CUDA error at bay. If it does occur, it is usually sufficient to simply press the refresh button on the manager. The nodes required for the first part of the workflow are at least two load image nodes. The prepare image for clip vision nodes are helpful because they not only provide additional interpolation for the following IP adapter processing of the image tokens or image information. The developer said, the more interpolation, the better. But you can also use them to influence which part of the original image should be processed. You can also use it to sharpen the image. Ultimately, however, it is there to bring the image into the square shape, which is the only way the SDXL models can use the image. Basically, you can of course connect as many images as you want to the IP adapter via the batch image node, but this will eventually bring the computer to its knees. When selecting the source images, you should consider which image aspect should play a role. Your project depends not only on this selection, but also on which of the IP adapter models you choose. My tests have shown that the IP adapter SDXL VTH model simply achieves reliably good results. The IP adapter plus models sometimes deliver really great images. But as they are very VRAM heavy, not only when creating the embeds, but also when using them later, my choice lay with the former models. As for the load clip vision node, the one you can see here was also the most reliable. Overall, I tried all the models, but the direct comparison is the subject of another video. To save the created embeds, you still need the encode IP adapter image node, which you must then connect to the save IP adapter embeds node. However, you can deactivate both nodes again first Simply select them, for example, by holding down control and dragging the mouse pointer over both nodes and then pressing control plus M. If you are using one of the IP adapter plus models, you must not forget to set the relevant option to true in the encode node. Otherwise, the later application will fail and you will have to repeat the whole process. Unfortunately, Comfy pointed this out to me more than once. You should set the steps in the sampler quite high, as the adapter sends a lot of image information that the sampler must be able to process, or rather, the SDXL model that you are using. On the other hand, you should set the CFG value low, and you should not write much in the prompt. In my tests, it has always been shown that the less it is written, the better the results. If the images still don't meet your expectations after one or two runs, a control net will help as always. However, you should then lower the denoise value a little. A value between 70 and 90 has proven to work well. If you use the empty latent image node, remember that a good resolution for the SDXL models, and for our purposes here, is 1280 to 768. Later, the images will have to be scaled down to 1024 to 576 for the stable video diffusion model anyway. Once you are satisfied with the generated images, 
select the encode image node and the save embeds node and press Ctrl plus M again to reactivate both. Then click on QPrompt and the embeds will be saved in the output folder. You will then find them in the automatically created embeds folder. Now all you have to do is copy the file and place it in the input folder. So that it doesn't get confusing, I quickly created an embeds folder in the input folder myself. Repeat this process until you have all the embeds you want. Rinse and repeat till you have all the embeds you need. That was the first part of the workflow. Before we get to the setup, mark the first part and deactivate it as usual. For efficiency, you can save the part that you know will be needed later anyway as a template. Part 2 The nodes that are important here are Load IP adapter embeds. Apply IP adapter from encoded, and for the latter we then open the attention mask. And now the fun can begin. Not quite yet. First, we still need an image loader, so that the sampler gets enough latent noise to work. I have inserted a latent noise injection node in between. This simply proved to be highly effective. In any case, we can now simply insert or upload a few blank pages in the correct resolution. Select the created embeds in the embeds loader, and then right-click on Open in Mask Editor in the Masks. The blank page opens in the mask, and depending on the image idea, you can then mask the areas as desired with the left mouse button. The mouse wheel can be used to quickly and easily adjust the thickness, and the right mouse button can be used to remove any unwanted markings. Hold down the control key and left mouse button to move the image back and forth, and hold down the control key and mouse wheel to zoom in and out of the image. Once this is done, all you need to do is click on Save to Node. Depending on how many embeds you want to use, you can connect them together, but more than four can cause CUDA problems. But as already mentioned, the Refresh button in the Manager can often solve the problem. After a few attempts and adjustments and a certain waiting time, the CFG value should also be around 50 here. An image is created from the latent image noise. Until that happens, take a look at this. I've been more than amazed since I tried out these IP adapters a few days ago. I came across the image generating AIs almost a year ago because I had just self-published my first science fiction novel, but can't draw well enough to illustrate the different worlds, species and civilizations. Since then, getting stable diffusion to translate my ideas into images has proven to be no easy task. The problem is that the images have to look as described in the book. If I give stable diffusion a lot of free reign, it generates cool images, but rarely what I want. And as that old tyre commercial rightly says, power is nothing without control. 
These IP adapters, along with the SDXL models, seem to be getting pretty close to solving my problem. Apart from the fact that I simply enjoy the creative things I can do with them. Images with everyday subjects are basically easy to generate and now look fantastic. You only discover image errors if you look closely at the images or know the weaknesses, like the eyes or the teeth, not to mention the hands. But getting the AI to produce unusual, creative, even artistic images is still not so easy. Let's see what else this combination, which you can see here in the video, can produce from the image noise. But I digress. The image is finished and we can move on to the third part of the workflow. Part 3. It's pretty cool how the stable video diffusion model can put our still image into motion. At least it makes me grin and say, wow, every time. If you want to learn more about the nodes, you can watch my previous video. What's different here is the connection to the second part. If you have a lot of VRAM, you can connect the image resize node to the VE decode node from the previous part of the workflow. All others, myself included, should better use an image loader. The standard length for the SVD model is 2 seconds, but with the Fortuna VFI node in between, you can bring the video to a comparatively respectable length. However, this interpolation simply stretches the existing frames. That is, the movements are ultimately displayed stretched over a longer duration. But, at least it worked with the new SVDXT 1.1 model. You can even integrate a sound file here. See and hear for yourself. That's it for this video for now. Thanks for watching. If the video was helpful and or interesting, I appreciate a like and a subscribe. And don't forget, have a nice day.